the Green River at Split Mountain here in Dinosaur National Monument. Brings back memories because there's been many river trips I've taken that ended up here. This was the place where our trip ended. And among all the river systems in the West, this is definitely on the list of just beauty, scenic beauty, and great geology on just a fantastic river canyon. Thanks for joining me. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey. We're gonna look into this riddle of why the Green River cuts through this immense uh, structural feature. This is the split mountain anticline. You can see the beds here on the right side that are dipping to the south. You can even go from the big resistant Weber sandstone into uh, the softer Triassic beds going off into the distance here. Why would a river cut through the middle of an anticline with such hard and resistant rocks? Well, this was a, a question that plagued even John Wesley Powell when he made his early voyages down through this river system in the late 1800s. And something he really scratched his head over, and it took geologists a while to come up with this idea of how this landscape had evolved. Um, and if you look to the east of here, which you can't see from here, but on Google Earth to the east of here, there's much softer rocks and a much more lower relief subdued landscape. So it really begs the question, why would this river cut through you know, thousands of feet of hard resistant rock when there's a much easier path that exists just to the east? Here we have an aerial view from Google Earth that shows us the structure, Split Mountain Anticline, this uplift here, and then the path of the Green River as it cuts right through the center of Split Mountain and then exits here near where the video was shot. Notice though to the west that there is this area of lower relief, this area where we have these softer sedimentary units, shales and mudstones, these Triassic rocks which are much softer. And so again, it begs the question, why would this river cut right through these hard sandstones and limestones rather than take this more uh, gentle and easier path around the nose of the Split Mountain anticline? Here again using Google Earth as a view to the east of the Split Mountain Anticline and just to give you some sense of scale of how big this structure is from sort of a human perspective we can actually use the street feature they've actually run a camera down through Split Mountain on river trips and this gives you the perspective of how big the canyon is from the water level looking up at these cliffs of limestone and sandstone. Literally 2,000 feet or more of vertical relief here in Split Mountain as we look here down towards the west. Well let's see if we can sleuth this together a little bit. Um, so observations that folks have made have showed that this river system um, didn't always exist in these big deep canyons. There was another landscape that existed prior to the landscape we see today. So let me see if I can pull out my clipboard and a handy dandy drawing here that'll help make sense of it. Let's just go to the dash of the truck here to piece this together. So the first part of our story is a meandering stream. So the idea here is that the split mountain anticline, which formed during the Laramide orogeny about 40 to 70 million years ago, already exists. So this land, this landform, this anticline, this structural feature had already formed, but it had already been eroded later um, after the Laramide orogeny and blanketed with a big layer of gravel and conglomerate that was shed off of the adjacent uh, uplifted you into mountains. And so we have an ancestral green river flowing across a pretty subdued landscape with this gravel conglomerate just beneath it. But eventually um, that gravel gets eroded away as the area gets uplifted a little bit and the stream system encounters those hard resistant rocks, that anticline, those, those re resistant sandstones and limestones that make up the split mountain anticline. So with the conglomerate totally removed, as the river starts tapping into these harder resistant rocks, it maintains its course. And so the, nothing's being uplifted, it's more a process of the downcutting of the stream cutting into this landscape and the structural feature that was previously buried beneath all that gravel of the conglomerate. And then eventually, as the canyon cuts down into this 
anticline and the structural feature. It excavates a canyon, so it actually excavates the canyon landscape we see today along the Green River where it is a um, cut into this existing structure here. This is a type of uh, landscape development called a superposed stream. It used to be called superimposed. Now the correct terminology is superposed stream, one in which the river existed at some previous time, um, but was on a lower relief surface and the structure it was buried. And then over time, that structure was exhumed, um, exposed, and the river maintains its course and cuts down into it. So a pretty fascinating story here of the Green River and Split Mountain Anticline, one of the more uh, neat and classic problems that was solved here in the Western US, looking at these rocks. The, Pennsylvanian Weber sandstone and these Triassic units uh, which young to the east here. So this is the again the south flank of the split mountain anticline and on the far side of the ridge there everything drops back down to the north side there. So quick lesson on the split mountain anticline and sort of the the curious case and the conundrum of the Green River. Hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for your support and we'll see you next time.